Leader of the Third Party. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. I cannot think of a group that could be happier about this debate in here over whether we put a price on carbon pollution than the oil and gas industry, which last year in Canada alone took $70 billion in profits from the people of Canada. $70 billion in profits. Why in the world are we not talking about that? Political conversations around the carbon tax and rebate have distracted us from the big picture. If we want to meet our climate goals, BC's biggest polluters need to pay their fair share. Research shows that industrial carbon pricing reduces emissions more than consumer pricing, but questions remain around the details of BC's new output-based pricing system, which allows BC's biggest polluters to use offsets and credits for a portion of their emissions. However, research has found that carbon offsets are often unreliable and overcount emissions reductions. My question is to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. How will this government guarantee that their carbon offsets are effective and that regulations for industry ensure big polluters pay their fair share? Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the member for the question because it, it points out uh, important measures that this government has taken to ensure that when offsets are allowed, as with the new Forest Carbon Offset Protocol 2, we ensure that they meet the highest international standards. That means they must be additional. That means they must not be double counted. And that means that they will stand up to international standards. Those are the standards that we will apply to offsets used under the output-based pricing system. And we have ensured that we set an output-based pricing system that retains an important price signal for industry while ensuring that industry survives to implement the emission reductions and employ British Columbians. Leader of Third Party Supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. The price signal that this government has given to the oil and gas industry is that they will continue to give them tax cuts and subsidies. Tax cuts and subsidies for the biggest polluters means less funding for initiatives that lower emissions and address the cost of living. At least $5.34 billion in provincial subsidies are planned for LNG Canada. Meanwhile, this year's budget only includes $1.3 billion in new spending for climate-related initiatives. Experts predict a highly uncertain future for profit profitability of BC's LNG industry, but this government continues to subsidize and expand the industry. Charging polluters their fair share would mean more money for transit, renewal, renewables and people in BC, all of which would create jobs, improve air quality and promote long-term affordability by reducing reliance on polluting fossil fuels. This government falls short on climate spending and continues to subsidize large polluters. Two steps, both in the wrong direction. Again, to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change Strategy. Can he explain why this government continues to subsidize the fossil fuel industry, an industry that brought in $70 billion in profits just in Canada in 2022? Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And as I assume the uh, leader of the third party knows, we have committed to eliminating fossil fuel subsidies, and we started with the largest single fossil fuel subsidy, the Deep Well Royalty Credit. We're continuing to ensure that we invest in renewables, that we encourage outside investment in alternate forms of clean energy. We are making the transition. We are working on it. We have a Clean Energy and Major Projects Office. We have a suite of policies, including one that apparently uh, the member missed an announcement of last Thursday that will ensure that we hit our climate targets for the oil and gas sector and support the transition to clean, renewable energy for British Columbians and also those to whom we can export both technologies and product. 